We're in Barcelona for MWC 22. I'm here with Rob Shooter. He is the CEO of BT Enterprise. Rob, thanks very much for joining us. Good to see you. Um, so you've been at BT for just over a year now. Uh, what have been the highs and the lows within that time? And were there any specific experiences that you could bring with you from your time at MTN into the job you have now? Look, I think one of the challenges was I've, I flew into the UK January last year. It was sort of middle of COVID, middle of lockdown. So it was, you know, new country, new job. And, and I had to do most of it, you know, sitting in my apartment in front of a screen. Um, and it's really difficult to get the feel of a place, you know, if you're, you know, not meeting the people and meeting the customers. Um, and it took a while for my family to come across, so it was a little bit, uh, you know, on my own a lot. Um, I think outside of that, you know, all the, all the reasons I had for joining a company like BT have been very much validated. It's got a great brand in the enterprise market, got a lot of infrastructure, um, points of presence all over the country. Um, and I think ultimately now our challenge is to take all of that potential and, and build it into, you know, a really a growing business. We've not grown for a while. Um, it's obviously different from the MTN experience because MTN is emerging markets, more high growth, a lot of subscriber growth, adoption. Um, and, and, and in the emerging markets, you get a bit more of that sense that the, the horizon is still you know, out there. Um, and in the developed markets, they're much closer to the cutting edge of the technologies. So there's much more going on with 5G cloud, edge, slicing. And yeah, it's been an exciting time. Okay, good. Um, so uh, sort of cracking the enterprise market is something that all of the communication service providers have been trying to do for, for decades and very often with limited success. Um, what's needed to, uh, for telcos to become the sort of the go-to, the must-have partners for enterprises, particularly now in this 5G era that's exciting everybody with the, the potential and possibilities? I think BT's got really got a, a scale business in UK enterprise. We've got more than five billion pounds of revenue. Um, we service customers, you know, all, all, all across the country. Um, obviously coming from a history of being the fixed line operator, so quite connectivity centric. Um, I think we've got, we've got a few um, challenges. The one challenge is that our customers are in a journey of migrating from legacy services on legacy networks into a modern digital architecture. And that's a fantastic opportunity for us to help them along that journey. I think BT is very well positioned to do that. You know, best 5G network in the country, biggest fixed line network, you know, a lot of infrastructure and resourceful solutions. Um, you've got to be able to see the world from the eyes of your customer because customers are not so much interested in the technology anymore. You know, you don't, you don't sell 5G. You've got to assemble these fantastic technologies into a solution that meets a customer need. And, and that's where the sweet spot is. And to do that, we've just got to make sure that we understand our customers, understand their technologies, we've got salespeople in the right place. Um, and you know, if we're going to beat the competition to the heart of your question, just got to you know, get up a bit earlier and go to bed a bit later. <laughs> right, which uh, everybody knows a bit about here in Barcelona at this show. But I mean, that has always been the case. That has been the problem for for decades um, of kind of relying on that connectivity but not really knowing or going much further. And there are other companies like the systems integrators, for example, who have worked probably a lot more closely within verticals. So, I mean, is there an opportunity for a BT or any of the other telcos to really, you know, up their game in terms of their domain knowledge of these enterprise sectors? I think, I think very much so. And I think that's been a part of the industry for some time. I mean, in the, in the, in the five odd billion pounds of revenue I described earlier, there is really more than a billion pounds in enterprise managed services where we are running the networks and the IT systems for our large customers. In that sense, often in competition with a system integrator who would compete um, for that kind of business. I think in the vertical space, we recently announced the formation of Division X. Division X is the entity that's going to focus on solution selling for the modern components particularly 5G, IoT, Edge and Cloud. It's also where we are putting all of our initiatives around the healthcare vertical. We've hired some people um, to focus on that. And we're going to be expanding that also into transport and logistics uh, in the second half of the year. Um, so, you know, ultimately, for us, it's always going to be a combination of wanting to front onto a customer with a solution that is relevant to the industry they're in, but also often working collaboratively 
with a system integrator or another partner or Microsoft or Amazon to assemble a solution. I think the key thing for BT is we've got to be able to do both. Now those kind of partners you mentioned there, they're also looking at these, all these opportunities and thinking, well, yeah, we can't do it all ourselves, but we'll be the lead partner and we'll bring in some others. And, and everybody that's looking at the opportunity sees it the same way. So what would make a telco the optimum lead partner in those kind of collaborations? I mean, I think increasingly the telcos will have more advantages than disadvantages. Um, and maybe that's different to how others see it. But, um, you know, the underlying network infrastructure really rises in prominence when you start to run mission critical systems on it, when you need ultra low latency, when you need 99.59 um, kind of resilience, you need redundancy. So that becomes a really important part of the solution set. Complex customers often want the entire thing managed for them. So you've got to be able to run big managed services environments. There are not that many telcos that do that. That is, I think, a really uh, a hallmark of, of BT's strength. Um, and, and I think the, 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 the third aspect is someone has got to stitch all the pieces together. And your very large customers can choose to do that or they can get somebody to run it for them. But the vast bulk of the UK business to business market doesn't really want to get into that. Um, and they don't particularly want to manage a whole bunch of people who are doing that. Um, so, you know, first prize for us is we'll be facing onto the customer with a solution. We're pulling partners in. There'll be many instances where we get pulled in as an infrastructure or connectivity partner. That's also quite fine. In the end, our industry, it's, it's a co-opetition industry. Right. Competition, cooperation at the same time. So there's a lot of excitement about what kind of revenues that the enterprise sector could finally deliver to CSPs. Um, ultimately, is the uh, prospect of getting a return on BT's 5G investments resting on the sales and margin growth that are going to come from uh, BT Enterprise and the work that it does? I think, as you know, from my background, I've got some experience in the mobile space. That's most of where my, my career has been. I think the first thing to say is that this, this evolution of the mobile technology from 3G to 4G to 5G is first and foremost just about a much more efficient way of handling traffic on a network. Um, it's more spectrally efficient, uses less spectrum, can handle more capacity, does, the network does not to be as dense, it can handle more devices. So the operators that invested, for example, in 4G would, would never have been able to handle the traffic on the network using 3G. It would just be too expensive. And as we make the transition from 4G to 5G, the same thing will be true. These mobile networks are carrying 40% more traffic every year. You know, the load on the network is doubling every two years. So first and foremost, the return from investing in 5G is going to come from a more efficient network. Because your alternative would be to buy more spectrum or densify the network, both of which are you know, really expensive and inefficient. I think secondly, you know, the second monetization is in the consumer space um, because the 5G network provides better speed um, and it's also in the competitive domain because if you've got a better 5G network and there's more places where your customers will see 5G on the phone, then you, know, you compete against other networks. Now to your question on 5G monetization and use cases in the enterprise market, I think the challenge for today is that the, the 5G networks are not yet covering the whole country. So the use cases in the next three to four years, I would say, are really going to be around the deployment of 5G private networks. These are campus networks where you take a big manufacturing facility um, and you deploy a, a, like an umbrella 5G network that's bespoke for that corporate in their environment. Um, their devices can connect securely. Their devices don't connect to another network. Other devices don't connect to their network. We integrate it with Edge, with IoT, um, with their cloud applications. So I think this is going to be the big focus in the industry the next few years. I think if you wind the clock out further, let's say five to ten years, then the macro deployment, that thick band of 5G is going to catch up. And then we will see you know, even more capacity for um, use cases in the enterprise market. So uh, I'm sure you've had a lot of conversations here in Barcelona about the, uh, the potential of 5G and the enterprise service and application innovation. Uh, and those conversations obviously, obviously happen during the day on the show floor and in meeting rooms, but also in the evening in Barcelona, in restaurants and bars. When you're getting to those restaurants and bars, what is your go-to tapas of choice and what are you ordering to drink with it? Ah, well, I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. So I always have the jamón, I have the cod carpaccio, I have a glass of the strongest Rioja that's available. 
Uh, many years ago, I walked the Camino de Santiago, which is 800 kilometers across Spain, east to west, and uh, I survived predominantly on Jamón and Rioja. So. That sounds like a good trip to be taking, <laughs> but maybe not just before Mobile World Congress. But Rob, fantastic. Thanks very much for joining us today and for giving us your, your tips of what we should be looking for in town this evening. So thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Rob.